Hello everybody, and this is Gigaraptor with a tutorial finally, and this tutorial will be on end cursors. Just a little bit of water there. So, what is end cursors? End cursors is a terminal handling library that is often used under Linux and Unix systems. Although there is a port called PD cursors for Windows, though it's not particularly good from my experience with it, as that's why I originally learned cursors from. So in order to get this working you will need to install it from either apt.get apt -get, or from other sources like probably the main site because I think there's a site for it involving you downloading it and I think there's, there's also one for PD cursors as well. So usually what you would do is you would essentially type in this and install the package called ncursors that's dev because this stands for development and that means it contains everything you need to start compiling with it but I've already got it installed of course because I'm making a tutorial on it and it'd be very stupid if I didn't wouldn't it so this is how we are gonna get it started bear in mind that while this can be used with this is a predominantly a C library being written in 1980 for the famous game Rogue it can it has bindings it, it can be used natively with C++ and it can it can also be used with bindings with other languages Python I believe has it built in like when you just download it so for the most part these commands are, are like in all of them so just to demonstrate the sample hello world with the always needed one we're going to include ncursors die because it still has a compiler to include the header file for this. Obviously we, we know how to create a um, main function with C. So if you don't go and watch my C tutorial. Otherwise if you learn from a book or whatever, yeah you should be fine here. So the initial command you type is in its screen. And this creates something called STD screen. Which is the standard screen for printing to, although you can create other screens as I'll demonstrate in a later tutorial. It probably won't be in the first 10 though, however, because it complicates a lot of it. And to be honest, I've never really found a use for them because I've only made basic demos with them, as demonstrated with the programs I released earlier. So then we've got init screen, and then there's there's two options, although there are more than that. There are two predominant options, raw and C break. Now, what C break allows you to do is if you type something, for example, like Control Z or Control X, you would be able to exit out the program. Whereas with just raw, you wouldn't be able to exit out with these. So, for the most part, you'll be wanting to use raw unless you're creating test programs, in which case it's probably a good idea to use C break, as C break allows you to exit out the programs if something goes seriously wrong. And then we type in something called print w. It works in the same way as print f. So you can put in say percentage d or something, followed by a variable or whatever, and it will type it. So this essentially just prints this up in the top right hand corner as well as leaving space for more. So then since our main program is done, you type in get char, which can be applied to variables as well, but what it essentially does is it creates almost a system pause or whatever. It's a pause in the program, so you have to press enter or any key to continue, although it won't display that. And then finally, we type in end win. And what this allows us to do, I should really be putting comments here, but end win kills, well, it frees the memory under in its screen and it closes down the ncursors library as this creates it this is a if you do C++ because this is quite applicable to C++ it's sort of a constructor and this is a destructor although since it's C there are no classes involved and once we get to this point it will, you can do whatever whatever's left of your program say file IO or whatever and it will then just reach return zero and it will end so we're going to save this and we're going to compile this like this, not Jesus' C, obviously. And we'll call our program hello, 
and then go to C. And to include the library, you always need this. You've got to touch dash L, which means dash library, followed by the name of the library. So we'll do N cursors. If my keyboard won't stop spazzing out. And this will compile the program as we see. Very quick, much quicker than Sigwin. And you should probably know this by now if you're running Linux, you type about dot dash hello. And it clears the screen, which automatically makes it a lot better at displaying things than, say, regular the regular f, um, printf functions with the standard library in certain ways, especially if you're creating something like a game, because the last thing you want with a full screen game like Rogue is to have the back text from the original running showing the background. And then we just press enter and it's done. So that was the first C tutorial, uh, C tutorial, the first N cursors tutorial. I probably won't edit that out for the sake of showing that I'm a human being. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will be doing more.